Hi, Dr. Dave here. Do you know what throw is? It is caused by friction between the cue ball and object ball that pushes the object ball off the expected line of center's direction. When there is a cut angle, the cue ball rubs on the object ball during contact in the direction of motion, causing the object ball to head offline. In this case, the throw is called cut induced throw or CIT. When the cue ball rubs to the right, it throws the object ball to the right. And when the cue ball rubs to the left, it throws the object ball to the left. Throw can also be caused by side spin, in which case it is called spin induced throw or SIT. Again, whichever way the cue ball rubs on the object ball during contact is the direction the object ball gets thrown. With a straight shot with left spin, the cue ball rubs on the object ball to the right, causing throw to the right. And with a straight shot with right spin, the cue ball rubs on the object ball to the left, causing throw to the left. Throw is very complicated when you look at all of its intricacies, and even pros miss shots because they don't always compensate for throw when necessary. In this video, I summarize the 10 most important things you need to know about throw in your game. Before we get into the top 10 list, I wanted to remind you to subscribe to my channel and turn on bell notifications so you don't miss any of my future videos. Also, if you have enjoyed or benefited from any of my online videos or resources, all of which I post openly and free for everybody to enjoy, please consider showing your support by purchasing one of my instructional products at drdavebilliards.com or by making a donation at billiards.colostate.edu. Links are available in the video description. Thank you in advance for your support. I appreciate it. Okay, let's get back to the top 10 things you need to know about throw. With a cut to the left and left spin, the object ball gets thrown to the right. And with lots of right spin, the object ball gets thrown to the left. Therefore, there is an amount of spin that will result in no throw whatsoever. It is called gearing outside spin since the cue ball rolls along the object ball while in contact like a meshing gear. Notice how the vertical ball stripe remains vertical during the shot. This wasn't the case with the other shots that had throw where the stripe wobbled. Anytime there is throw, side spin is also transferred to the object ball. Here's an example shot where understanding throw is important. If I use a slow stun shot where the cue ball has no top or bottom spin at impact, the object ball gets thrown well off its line. It gets thrown in the other direction if I use too much outside spin. With gearing outside spin, there is no throw whatsoever, and the object ball heads along the expected line of center's direction with a pure ghost ball aim. Did you see the stripe remain vertical? You might be thinking, should I use gearing outside spin on every shot so the object ball will always head in the direction I expect? Well, it's not that simple. First, sometimes position play requires you to use other types and amounts of side spin. Also, you need to be able to judge the gearing amount of spin, which is different for every cut angle. Also, when using side spin, you must be good at adjusting your aim for cue ball deflection caused by squirt and swerve, which can be difficult to judge over a wide range of shot speeds and distances. See the links in the video description for more information on all these topics. On most shots, you can ignore throw, especially on short shots on tables with big pockets. Here, the object ball is being thrown due to cut-induced throw, but I still pocket the ball. But on a longer shot, or with tight pockets, throw can cause a miss. Here, I am simulating a smaller pocket or longer shot using sentinel balls. Here's a good example where if I don't adjust my aim for CIT, I might miss the shot, especially if I use soft stun. One option to compensate for throw is to simply aim to overcut the shot. Here, I am aiming to a ghost ball position lined up well to the left of the pocket, but throw to the right will compensate for the cut. Another option is to use gearing outside spin. You can also use faster speed and backspin, both of which reduce throw. Then, only a small correction for throw is required. You can also use faster speed and topspin, where there will be very little throw. 
Remember, with slow stun, the object ball gets thrown a lot. As we just saw, one way to adjust for this is to overcut the shot slightly, where you hit the object ball a little thinner. Did you see how much I overcut the ball? Again, CIT throws the ball back online. Notice the stripe wobble caused by the throw and spin transfer. Here's a good example where I need slow stun to get shape on the 8 after shooting the last stripe. With a pure ghost ball aim, I miss the shot due to CIT. But I can pocket the ball and win the game if I overcut the 11 slightly. This will shift the tangent line forward a little, so I need a touch of backspin to keep the cue ball online. As we just saw, one type of shot where you must compensate aim for throw is a soft stun shot. Another type of shot where you must compensate is a slow roll shot. The amount of throw won't be as much as with a soft stun shot, but it can still cause a miss. Again, I just need to overcut this shot a little. Now, the real problem here is I made a poor choice to hit the original shot so softly where throw is large. But sometimes this is required if there is a follow-up shot that requires soft speed for position. If the 8 were the last shot of the game, the slow roll shot is not the best option. You can instead use more speed, which will reduce the throw. But that risks scratching. Another option is straight backspin with speed, again with almost no throw. You might be thinking, why doesn't Dr. Dave use gearing outside spin here? Well, because I am elevated over the rail slightly, the cue ball might swerve more than I expect, and I might use too little or too much spin, causing a miss. There, the swerve was more than I expected, and I had too much side spin, which also created SIT to the left. If I roll the ball instead with gearing outside, there will be less swerve since the cue will be more level, and it is easier to pocket the ball. That shot was easy to judge. Here I am using draw with slight overcut for throw. The last two shot options were my favorites, although I liked the draw shot the best. I was able to use a confident stroke and I didn't need to judge any side spin effects. Another benefit was ending up in the center of the table, which is often a good place to go when playing position, so this is an important shot type to master. But you need to choose whichever approach is most reliable for you. So it is important to practice a wide range of shot types like this so you will know which will be the most effective in game situations. Another shot where you absolutely need to adjust for throw is if you are using an amount of spin much greater than the gearing amount. Here I am shooting the 11 and need to get to the long side of the 8. If I aim for the pure ghost ball position with lots of outside spin, SIT will push the 11 offline. and I didn't get shape anyway. Instead, I need to aim a little full to compensate for SIT. This is good because the full hit, backspin, and right side spin all help me get the cue ball more up table for shape on the eight. I almost hit that a little too full, but this really helped me get good action on the shot. I hope part one of this video has helped improve your understanding of throw and its effects. Stay tuned for part two, which will cover the remainder of the list of top 10 things you need to know about throw in your game. If you want more help with learning how to adjust your aim, not only for throw, but also for cue ball deflection caused by squirt and swerve when using side spin, see my system for aiming with side spin. It covers everything in great detail and provides many game situation examples. Good luck with your game from Dr. Dave.